For the 57th time in American history, a presidential inauguration ceremony held in Washington today. The president was officially sworn in yesterday, but the festivities were moved to today. Danielle Nottingham has the details on President Obama's historic day in the nation's capital. Right president Obama took the oath of office for his second term, standing in front of the Capitol. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. He placed his hand on two Bibles. One belonged to Abraham Lincoln, the other to Dr. Martin Luther King. In his inaugural address, the president gave his vision for the nation's future. We are true to our creed when a little girl born into the bleakest poverty knows that she has the same chance to succeed as anybody else. He touched on a range of issues, including taxes, gun control and immigration, and he urged cooperation in Washington. Progress does not compel us to settle centuries long debates about the role of government for all time, but it does require us to act in our time. After the ceremony, the president turned to take one last look at the view across the mall. Later, he signed documents nominating his cabinet members. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid toasted the president at a luncheon with congressional leaders. The president thanked all in attendance. I recognize that democracy is not always easy. Uh, and I recognize there are profound differences in this room. Uh, but I just want to say thank you for your service. The day concluded with a one and a half mile parade to the White House. Thousands of people are packing the inaugural parade route. Several spectators behind me paid $44 to see the 44th president pass by. The president and first lady were expected to walk a portion of the route. Tonight, they will attend two inaugural balls. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Washington. A familiar face was present at today's inauguration. Senator Chuck Schumer opened up the ceremony. He says he's optimistic about the next four years. But in 2013, far too many doubt the future of this great nation and our ability to tackle our own era's half-finished domes. Today's problems are intractable, they say. The times are so complex, the differences in the country and the world so deep, we will never overcome them. America always rises to the occasion. America prevails and America prospers. Senator Schumer also spoke at the inaugural luncheon and mentioned Rochester when calling attention to the only female represented in Statuary Hall, suffragette Frances Willard. She was born in Churchville. On this inauguration day, the University of Rochester is showcasing a new presidential speech writing exhibit. It includes original speeches dating from Abraham Lincoln's inaugural address to President George H.W. Bush. Caroline Tucker took a tour today. The history that fills these cases displays some of the most famous presidential speeches of all time. Included is an original copy of President Abraham Lincoln's inaugural address. When you think about that historical moment, you know, the Civil War and slavery and all those major issues, that's really the, the theme in, in that address. You can find a presidential voice tucked inside the University of Rochester's Rare Books and Special Collections Department. It features a signed copy of President Kennedy's famous inauguration speech and letters between President Dwight Eisenhower and his wife. Each president puts his mark on, on his speeches and on his inauguration addresses. And um, so Warren Harding was the first president to have a speechwriter. And since then, I think that team has just grown. The exhibit includes public and private collections. Kurt Smith, a senior lecturer here at the University of Rochester, served as speechwriter to President George H.W. Bush. His personal collection is included here. Smith co-curated the exhibit, which is open to the public. He includes several of the speeches he crafted and an address President Bush made at Kodak Park. A presidential voice runs through March 8th. Caroline Tucker, News 8. One local student got to see history happen firsthand today in Washington. Erin Brennan Burke is a 10th grader at the Harley School. She was one of the local winners of the inauguration lottery held by Senator Chuck Schumer. Brennan Burke scored two tickets to watch the president take the oath of office. Her family made the trip as well. And some young musicians from the Eastman School of Music actually took part in the inauguration ceremony today. They played for guests and the first family during the luncheon after the swearing in. The quartet competed against seven other groups from across the country to win the honor. A lot of local products featured prominently today in Washington. Finger Lakes Wine and Rochester Seaway Trail Honey were served at the inaugural luncheon. The wine that was served is Tierce Finger Lakes Dry Riesling. That's produced at three Finger Lakes vineyards. 
You can see full coverage of today's presidential inauguration coming up on the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. That's right here on News 8 at 630. Today was also the day that the country honors Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The memory of the slain civil rights leader was heavy today at the inauguration. President Obama used the Bible King carried throughout the civil rights movement for his swearing in ceremony. Ashley Zilka attended a ceremony honoring Dr. King. Ashley? Tina, many thought this day would never come, that the nation would honor Martin Luther King Jr. on the same day as our first African-American president. Music filled the Eastman Theater this morning for a Martin Luther King celebration. Hundreds packed the theater for the 28th annual Collective Community Worship Celebration. Leaders of various faiths, politicians, and the community-wide celebration choir led the ceremony. Anthony Smith is a part of Alpha Phi Alpha, the same fraternity that King was a part of. And obviously as being an alpha, um, something that I'm very proud of and I know it's something that very, uh, Dr. King was very passionate about. It's also just, uh, you know, I feel like it's just part of my responsibility to carry on some of the things that he believed in is, uh, to keep his legacy going. When I was at Martin Luther King's uh, I Have a Dream speech as a teenager. And uh, when I look back at all of the stuff that I had to live through in my lifetime, I would say we've made tremendous progress. Yeah. Now the last time Inauguration Day fell on Martin Luther King Day was for President Ronald Reagan's second term in 1985. Ashley Zoka, News 8. Turns out Dr. King has a couple of connections in Rochester, uh, one especially at the Colgate Divinity School. King attended Crozier Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania from 1948 to 1951. That seminary later moved to Rochester and joined Colgate in 1970. Colgate still has a copy of King's admissions letter and his father's letter of recommendation. Colgate's proud to have this historical connection. Well, for us, you know, we're very proud to, to, to be able to have, have played a part in, in the education formation of, of, of such a, a leader, not only for human rights, but, but for all, all, you know, in terms of theological development in, in, in the United States at large. And Dr. King's spiritual advisor, Howard Thurman, also graduated from Colgate in 1924. Students at the Harley School turned a day off from school into a day on. They helped out at a variety of local organizations, and the focus was kids helping kids. They assembled birthday bags for the Bay Street Food Cupboard and packed up Hershey's Kisses for kids who were in the hospital. Students say doing this helps them carry on the message and vision of Martin Luther King Jr. He's really special because he stuck up for people to be treated the same and because people were being treated really badly back then. He's special and he's really kind because he, he did a lot of things um, but without hurting anybody. The biggest message I think that we really want people to go away with is that you can make a difference. And I think, you know, if we, we give a little bit of ourselves, we can really make a huge impact in our community. The Harley School tries to make a difference and does make a difference in our community every Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The Rochester Amherst are honoring our heroes. The team recognized first responders at their game today. Vanessa Herring was there. She joins us now live in the newsroom. Vanessa? Well, the team sported special Webs West Webster Fire Department patches on their jerseys today to honor the injured and fallen firefighters from that department. The team took on the Hamilton Bulldogs this afternoon for a game dubbing today Hometown Heroes Day. Those jerseys with the special patches will be auctioned off and all the proceeds will go to the West Webster Fire Department. Today's game was also free for all first responders who wanted to attend. The team says the community was greatly affected by the Christmas Eve tragedy and they knew they had to do something. We were asked by a number of fans what we were going to do. We were looking internally what could we do to help obviously the victims that were impacted by this and uh, it just seemed to be a, a good fit since we had already previously scheduled uh, first responders. Like and as you just heard, there was a first responders game. The police officers took on the firefighters in a friendly matchup. Reporting live in the newsroom, Vanessa Herring, News 8. All right, Vanessa, thank you. We've got a link for the Jersey auction on our website. Just head to rochesterhomepage.net and look for this story under news headlines.